Now, you don't need a master's in geography to understand that Ohio and Michigan share a border, but an advanced degree in history might help you understand why that line is where it is and how it came about to be. It's a fascinating chapter in Northwest Ohio and Southeast Michigan local history that ties right into the 100-yard war the Buckeyes and Wolverines compete in each and every year. Football coaches have long drawn on the military for inspirational and organizational purposes. Now this week, as Ohio State prepares for Michigan, Urban Meyer is well known to continually play LL Cool J's It's Time for War throughout the Woody Hayes Athletic Center. Here in Fulton County, about a mile south of the state line, there is a historical site marking the Battle of Phillips Corners, a skirmish between representatives of the state of Ohio and the then territory of Michigan, part of the Toledo War, the dispute over the border between Ohio and Michigan. But as University of Toledo history professor Dr. Bruce Way tells us, calling that a war stretches the definition. There were some shots fired, although they were fired in the air over the river. Uh, there was one altercation that resulted in a stabbing, plenty of shouting back and forth. There was plenty of asserting my side is right, uh, plenty of contending that, well, we have a thousand, no, we have 10,000, we are ready to march and defend our honor and all. But uh, there are far more people involved on the weekend of an Ohio State Michigan football game than there were for the entire extent of the Toledo War. When it came right down to the, uh, the conflict itself, uh, it, it, it's generous to call it a war. Ultimately, with President Andrew Jackson's prodding, Michigan, in exchange for the Upper Peninsula, accepted the Southern Line, which Old State Line Road does mimic, creating the Lost Peninsula in Point Place. If the Fulton Line had been accepted instead of the Harris Line, modern Toledo would be much different. You just take a ruler and a map and lay it down on uh, Old State Line Road and follow it across and you can find out where. Uh, it would have gone right through the, uh, the campus of UTMC. Uh, the hotel would have been in Ohio. Uh, the hospital would have been in Michigan. If you were at the corner of uh, Airport and Reynolds, if you went into the uh, coffee shop on the corner there, you'd have an Ohio coffee. But if you turned north on Reynolds, you would be in Michigan in about three car lengths. Um, uh, the, uh, the corner, uh, southwest corner of the zoo is just about where that line would have been. Um, I think if you turn off Detroit Avenue into the VA hospital, you would be just about on the dividing line. Uh, and I think one of the reasons Michiganders tend to make more of it than Ohioans, as you say, this is Michigan's origin story, it's their, it's their, uh, their statehood. And they all now throw in a little bit of, well, we're in Michigan, obviously we got the UP, we won. You got pff, Toledo, you lost. Uh, and the Ohioans go, go. <laughs> So while declaring a clear-cut victor in the Toledo War is a tricky proposition, Dr. Way does say it is a safe assumption that this area would have developed along the same lines if it would have been Toledo, Michigan, instead of Toledo, Ohio. And I think city development was probably more a function of transportation and the lake that made the city happen here. I think that the city that would have been most affected is probably Monroe that had Toledo really taken off as the southernmost large city in Toledo, Monroe might have you know, lagged well behind where it was. I, I'd be hard pressed to say the city would have been significantly different uh, had it been in Michigan than, than in Ohio.